Today I am in Adelaide, it's the 6th of May 2009, and I have the privilege of interviewing Bill Schmidt and John Lamprell. Both of these uh, men were prisoners of the Japanese during the period 1942 to 45, and as I understand it, these stories are uh, quite different, as is something which one finds is common that there are whilst the, these fellows experienced these dreadful conditions, often their experiences were different, were quite different due to being in a different location or under a different Japanese uh, hierarchy. But uh, it's probably best if I allow that story to come out in the words of Bill Schmidt and John Lamprell. Bill and John, May I say how much I appreciate you giving me your time today to come and have a talk and have an interview. A pleasure. So, so maybe, John, you could tell us about how you got to the Middle East. Just, just very quickly, we'll skip, uh, skip over it. Well, we, um, we got on this transatlantic line of the Ile de France, uh, which uh, it shouldn't have been put to sea at all. It, uh, we, we had to carry gear on from Sydney, mm. you know, for all sorts of gear we had to take on the ship. And uh, then eventually we got going and we were the last on the ship and we would lay down in the bowels mm. of the ship on hammocks. Mm. And uh, the, nobody seemed to know where you know, as far as the, the electronics, the sewerage and everything was, because the, somehow or other everything had been destroyed mm. in, in, in Singapore. And uh, there were occasions when you would be in your hammock and you'd look over here and, and there's raw sewerage flowing underneath oh, in this area where we were. Mm. And uh, so eventually it was that bad we were allowed to go up on the top deck and sleep up there at night. But then those, <laughs> those Afghan fellows, whatever, would come along with the hose and the dawn and we'd, our sleep would be interrupted. Mm. So, so uh, uh, and then we almost had a right on the on the on the ship in which Blackie uh, calmed down. It was in relation to food and so forth. Mm. And we had this uh, meeting up in this huge area on the ship uh, in relation to this protest. And anyhow, I remember Blackie jumped up on the table and. and uh, and he said, steady men, steady, for God's sake, steady. Mm. And these were those um, um, infantry reinforcements yeah. that came on. They had hardly uh, no discipline at all. And uh, so we went, just everything settled down after that. Mm. And, uh, and the way we went eventually got mm. to the Middle East. Can I ask you, now maybe Bill you can answer this, is uh, if the, the, sec the machine gun battalions were designed to be split up and to, yeah, to, re right. to provide yeah. the heavy weapons. The core troops. Yes. And, and, and so so were, were you split up to yeah, support well, battalions? Our, 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 our C company yeah. in the Middle East, of mm. course, we, we went in on the, on the, uh, on the, the desert side. Mm. And, uh, we went into a place called Little Kanitra to begin with. Uh, that was our first action, wasn't it? Yes. At Kanitra. And, uh, and then slowly progressed our way up to, uh, to Damascus. Damascus. Mm -hmm. and we took Damascus. Um, we really went in with the. Uh, they came out with a white flag, and we really, uh, not we really, I'm oh, sorry, no, Blackburn mm -hmm. took the surrender of Damascus. Mm -hmm. And then we ended up, of course, going into the mountains, and uh, that's where we were when it finished. But uh, 
we went in, I can always remember, and you'd remember John, we went into that, uh, um, what do you call the place? Apple Orchard, you know, just uh, uh, outside Damascus, up in the mountains there, and they bombed Hella, Shield Hella, or something. Yes. Like that. Remember that? <laughs> We went up there for a rest, but I didn't. We didn't rest very much. Right. We only got down as the, when the sun went down. They started to shell us, and uh, called Mary Hill. But uh, and then uh, we split up, and our platoons got split up, and we went into the very little places. Uh, I can remember getting a shell there one afternoon in another area. I've forgotten what it's called, and and uh, this. Uh, more, uh, shell burst right alongside us, and I was stupid enough, it looked pretty to me. I picked it up and it red off and cut my fingers, and oh god, first time I'd seen red off shrapnel, you know. But uh, eventually, of course, uh, the other other companies, Don Company and B Company, went up the coastway and they went into, into Lebanon. And uh, anyway, uh, we had a few, uh, a few uh, fellas captured. Uh, and uh, they, Tom Keyes, who's still alive, Tom, and a fellow called Frank Crouch, they they were in, they were in B Company, and they were captured, and re they got them before they got them away. They got them up in Tripoli or somewhere. They were holding them there to transport them. Oh, there's a lot of other POWs too that from the second second pioneers and some of the other battalions. Yes. That, uh, that campaign, I think it went about six weeks, didn't it? Where were they now? About yes. five or six weeks? It was pretty tough. Yeah. And, uh, you know, um, the pioneers, poor blokes, they lost about 48 blokes one morning attacking mm. that fort. Can I just stop you for a moment? Uh, this is working out really well because I've got both of you in the image, but I would like to be sure that I have. Could I? Ask you without asking you to be too friendly to get a little bit closer to each other. <laughs> oh, we share. <laughs> right. share yeah, yeah, we yeah, we yeah, yeah, yeah. share lots of things. Nothing peculiar. Yeah, we're, 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 we go away together. Okay, so you were actually Seventh Division troops, weren't you? Yes. Yeah, we, we were Seventh. Yeah. Division, so seventh division. when they took you out and and, and you, you thought you were going back to Australia, did yeah, you? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe you could tell us, we, we'll just move things along mm. to when you were off the coast of Sumatra and there was going to be that first landing. Do you, yeah. do you remember that? Oh, yeah, that we were sure that. That at Oosthaven. Mm. Oosthaven, yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> the, <laughs> go on. Well, I'm sorry, that, that one particular thing I, I heard there, and Blackie was standing up on the forecastle of this little oil tanker thing and uh, he said that we were going to go in there and clean the Japs up and so forth and of course some of the fellas didn't even have a rifle, they had nothing and uh, I think it was Doc oh, said to Blackie, he said but sir I, I, I haven't got a rifle and Blackie said well, you cut yourself a stout stick. Yeah, that was Griner. <laughs> Griner, was it? Major Griner from Bill. Oh. You cut yourself yeah, a yeah, stout yeah. stick and grab the first bloke to get knocked, yeah. grab, grab his ammunition yeah. and rifle. But we only had five rounds. Five rounds. Right. Oh, yeah. the the ship, see, all our machine guns and stuff got left behind the middle of it. Oh, <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. But Griner said, and when this chap said, it was, it was dark, you know, we was all lined up on the wharf, to, on the ship to get onto this lighter. He said, sir, I'm going to rifle. <laughs> and Griner said, now listen, I can still hear him saying, now listen, chaps. He said, listen. He said, those of you who haven't got a, haven't got a rifle, when you get ashore, cut yourself a stout, stout stick. stick. And yeah, when someone said. drops, Grab their rifle. Oh. That's his exact words. Oh. Oh. I remember that it was only yesterday. Oh. Was it, was Ra Griner a good officer? He, Griner. Yeah. yeah, I didn't have anything to do. He was a big commander. Oh. He was a big twin. Yeah. I believe he was. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I think he became two IC of the battalion, didn't he? After Blackie oh, went. Sure. I think uh, you see Blackie went, and then Ted Lynham 
yes, took, took over. Yes. And I think Griner was the two I see. I'm not sure. Yes. I don't remember him or uh, oh no, the mm, B uh, Cup, the C Company. Like uh, uh, he he didn't he didn't come back. If I remember, at least he wasn't with us. No. Uh, speed Speed Gordon. No. So. So Ted Lyon was promoted from major to yeah, lieutenant he colonel. Yeah, went up as a yeah. lieutenant colonel. Yeah, mm, mm. temporary. Yes. And uh, I don't know whether he ever got paid for it or not, but he was a major. Yes. And of yeah. of Don Company. Yes. And he was promoted to uh, uh, temporary CR lieutenant colonel of the battalion. Mm, yeah, mm. when when Blackie made a brigadier. Mm, mm. Anyway, you, you you didn't land at just Harlem. Well, you went we, down to Java. We you? got off. Mm. We yeah. got off this lighter mm. under a wharf, mm. and uh, there was a pommy officer came down the road, and he and we said what we do. He said, "Go back, and the Japs are just up the road here," mm. and we landed to go and protect the. Oil fields at Palembang. Palembang, yeah, mm. especially up there. And mm. they'd taken it four days before we'd mm. even mm. the Japs had. Mm. And so we got back onto this lighter, and of course we were lucky that the uh, oh. ship we were on hadn't sailed. Mm. Mm. But then it was as black as ink, mm. and yeah, we didn't know where it was, but there was a uh, a couple of seconds of lightning, mm. and we f found out where it was mm. then, and then they. Well, they had a job to get a, someone to take this lighter out yes. later because the, the harbour was mined, mm. you know, mm. and he didn't know where the money mined mm. but we, mm. he took it out. Mm. We got back on an order, remember getting that nice hot, hot cup of cocoa, mm. we got yeah. back mm. on about one or two o'clock in the morning. And the palms had ratted all out. All our packs that we'd left behind. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for that little interruption, but maybe if we can move forward to Java now, and where, if you can run through very quickly, where you were when you had you were sur you surrendered, and then in the camps that you were in, up to the point in which you moved across to Singapore. Well. Well, well, I don't we, know where we, we, just, we were on the road when the night of the surrender, weren't we? Yes, I mean, so we were outside yeah. Bandong there somewhere, but it was, we were still, you know, in transit. Yes. We, yeah. we, I don't, we weren't in any town. Well, time. when did you know that you were surrendering? Oh, well, well when they said that the Dutch had capitulated, Dutch I had think we were in yeah. Bandong. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, outside somewhere. Bandong yeah. somewhere. We see, you know, we're sort of in transit, that we yeah. just got in our trucks and took off. And when you, that happened, do you know how many of you uh, attempted to escape? Well... I know there was a fellow named Whitten who tried to escape. There was some... Uh, some of the blokes from the Perth. And our battalion, I don't think anyone tried to get away, did they? Yeah, and some of those Air Force blokes, what, what was that? Fella that used to come and have lunch with us and play bowls with us. Um, they were air force that came from the Middle East, mm. you know. Yeah, one squadron. And, and their planes were at Palembo, mm. and they lost a lot. Mm. The Japs came down and, and uh, bombed them. Uh, oh God, what was his name? He and two or three other fellas got in a boat and started to go off and it was, you know, hopeless. Wasn't there, was there a Jock McAllister? Does that ring a bell? Don't remember that. No, yeah. no. I'm, they were, worry, were all problem. from the Middle East. Yes. Right. Mm. Uh, oh, got Larry, no, no. I might think you were tough. Well, we'll move on and just, if you can run through with me, for me, the camps you were in, uh, once uh, you became POWs. Well, well, we've just well the first uh, one we went and there was a big market garden place, uh, you know, uh, it was called uh, Lilies, 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 mm -hmm. Lilies L E L E S, mm -hmm. and we were only there about a month, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Something yes. like that. It's hard to remember. And then they shifted us to, into a school at Garut. Mm -hmm. uh, there wasn't a hell of a lot of us there, and that's where I got malaria. I was the first bloke to get, get malaria. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
uh, Tim Godley, uh, I can always remember, when in one room of the school when they made it into a hospital. We had a chap, someone died there, I can't remember who it was. Yeah. And uh, anyway, I had this bloody malaria and uh, Tim Godley said to me, and Red Sheet, he was there, uh -huh. said to me, he came in and he said, well, we were trying to get some medication. And he came in now, I can still see it, he had a big jar, that big, that big around like a honey jar, full of red tablets, uh -huh. the Japs gave me, and it's quinine. Uh -huh. He said, I don't know how strong they are. He said, I'll give you ten, ten a day. Well, my bloody ears rang and the gold, oh my God, what uh -huh. a performance. Uh -huh. But I can always remember him saying to me, don't worry, Smitty. He said, the Dutch have landed, the, the, uh, the Yanks have landed at, uh, you'll be home in three weeks. Uh -huh. They've landed at Bali. Bali, you know, uh, where do they go now? Bali? Bali, yeah. Bali, mm -hmm. Bali. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you'll be home in three weeks. And I thought, geez, well, that's good, you know. Well, it's three and a half years, you got the three, right? But mm -hmm. that's about it. But uh, then we went, from there we went to Bandong. Mm -hmm. And Bandong was a big, big camp, mm -hmm. right in the town, you know. Mm -hmm. it was, and it was a, a, a camp that, uh, like a Dutch army camp, and there was a whole battalion of uh, Ambonese there, you know, with the dark bike oh. uh, uh, And uh, it was a good camp as far as you know, the, the huts were into the proper huts. Mm. That the, uh, it was very, very nice. And the only thing wrong with that, that's when they really, really shit hit the fan as far as food was concerned. Mm. Because uh, we, we, got, we got nothing but rice, Chilies mm. and uh, we first stuck that vitaminosis, yeah, and, not, and it was it mm. bad for the food. Food. And you, you, you get bandong balls and all sorts, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> they, they, they all, lose all the skin, you mm. know, if you scrape mm. them. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah, that was where we sort of learnt to say, Well, you're going to be starving from now on, and because. I can remember they gave us some uh, uh, dried potatoes and the cooks cooked this, you know, instead of rice. Mm. And I got a extra bloody serve of it and I, I, I thought I was going to bloody die with indigestion. Mm. You know, they must have swelled up in their bloody stomach or something mm. or they weren't cooked mm. properly, I wouldn't know. But mm. they were dried potatoes, I've never seen them before or since. Mm. But. Uh, it was pretty sick for food. Well then, uh, we went from there down to Makassar in trying to go to to go to Singapore and up to Thailand. Mm. And uh, and the food we had Christmas dinner down at, and I still got the menu at home, mm. you know, written out because mm. uh, I had those little tiny green peas. What did they call them, John? Do you remember? Catching you. Catching you, yeah. Mm. Mm. And uh, and the cooks. Up. Not a bad sort of a feed, you know. Uh, we didn't have turkey or ham or that sort of anything like that, but you know, they made risolve or something, you know. Mm. And uh, it was a, a little bit better than we had beforehand, a little bit better than what we had afterwards. How were the Japs treating you at the stage? I didn't see much of them. No, no we no, didn't. No, no. Camp. We, mm. um, we only used to have our tank over at night and in the morning and that's all you'd see of them. Yeah, mm, and they mm. had us catching bloody flies. Mm, we had yes. to catch flies mm. because the flies were bad mm. and everyone had to get mm. 20 flies or 10 mm. flies or mm. something. You what know? was the ship you went from Singapore uh, across to Singapore on? Oh, I don't know what oh, it was. It, it wasn't the Daiichi Maru, does it, does that I've ring a bell? No, no idea. I've got no idea. No. Right? I know that we all got four boiled eggs mm. to mm. take it, you yep. know. Mm. Uh, issue with mm. hard boiled eggs, mm. and uh, by hell, this is what we did. But we had two or three days on the bloody thing. Yes. We were getting from mm. Java to Singapore. It mm. was a, a troop carrier because mm. you remember there were all those wooden deckings and uh, uh, platforms. Uh, platforms. Platforms. Yeah. Mm. Well, we're down, yes. down the bottom yeah, of the bloody hole. About that high. Yeah. And that's, that's you had to come up the ladder to go up the toilet yeah, hangar yeah. backside over the side of the ship. Mm. Mm. Oh, and it was crowded. 
Yeah. Now, do you remember your, this, this famous reception in Singapore when uh, Black Jack Gallagher was alleged to have called you the Java rabble? Yeah, well, I don't yeah. remember. I remember it happening, but mm. I don't. I can't. I wasn't actually there when no. it all happened. I think mm. Blackie, Blackie went to send it. See, we had, we had only when we landed in Java, and we're there for nine months. Mm. We're there from. Uh, no, we, we went to Java in, Jan, in January. January. We were captured in March and we didn't mm. leave till the next January. Mm. Uh, and our clothes, we didn't have any spare clothes, mm. you know, and mm. we fitted out. I had a pair of black Dutch shoes mm. and fellas had green shirts mm. and they got some gear off the Dutch. Mm. But there's no Australian Army gear. And you were actually better off than the, than the sailors were because many of them were, when they went ashore, were starkers. Yeah, that's right. Mm. But uh, so, but when we got and of course Singapore, when we got to Singapore, they still had the they had a big Q store. They had everything, mm. you know. And they were getting out having a dress, uh, not what do you call it, uh, parades every day, and mm. uh, and they were just to say, you know, they'd never been captured. Mm. Uh, and of course, Blackie asked them for. Stuck some mm. for us, and we're weary, weary, yeah. weary, yeah. No, weary no. shirts, yeah. and yeah. black boots, and oh, yeah, you know, we were a rabbi, okay. I suppose. And strangely enough, none of those 8th Division people came down to see us. No, 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 no we were isolated. We were isolated mm. from the, and the, they reckon that we were deserters and. Uh, all sorts of things, and that mm. if they'd only knew they were blokes from Tobruk and Greece. Mm. And but there were and there were people with you amongst you who had left Singapore, and they were the ones they were describing as deserters, well, like, like Fred Airy, for we example. Yeah. He uh, was he was a second fourth machine gunner yeah. who got away from Singapore and then well, got recaptured that, with you that guys. That happened when we first got to jail. Yeah. We went in, we came ashore in in, in Batavia. Yeah. And uh, they put us out in a big air force hangar, mm. and uh, and these fellows are running around with watches and sugar uh, sandbags for a yes, of years. Yes, looting. Uh, and they jumped. And we pulled in alongside the uh, Empire Star, I think the name mm. of the ship was, mm. and there was all the nurses mm. and that got away from Singapore. And it was crowded, mm. and it was civilians. Mm. Well, these fellows jumped. They shot their way onto the, mm. onto that ship, mm. and they were running right. And, yeah. and Blackie, uh, yeah, Blackie at that stage had them captured and brought out, and they had them locked up in this hangar where we were. Mm. And they, they were screaming bloody being murdered, and they said, "And uh, wait a minute, you know, our CEO hears about this." Mm. Uh, I believe there were a few. Uh, uh, what were they? Reinforcements to go to Singapore you know, among them as well. Well, like you, you had uh, Jim Allpark with you. Do you, does he, do you. Do you remember the fellow? He was in. Oh no, sorry, you would not know. John. He was in Hintock Mountain Camp, and he was the one that would run the Ceylon solution. You know how they made Ceylon oh, in your camp? Yes, I didn't know. And I they heard that they, they ran it down to the Hintock River Camp. And this Jimmy Allpark was a second, fourth machine gunner. There were ninety of them. They, 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 well, what happened when the the ship? Yeah, I'll just happened. I'll just turn this off because it's not really. Right. Well, we've had a little little bit of lunch, and uh, hopefully nice. <laughs> you've refreshed your, your yourselves. And uh, Bill, I understand that you you had to you were kept in Singapore. Can you tell us why yeah, that well, occurred? Uh, we went to Singapore and it was in the wet season of course, it was in January and poured was rain, I've never forgotten and I got dysentery. And I sat out on the borehole in the rain day in and day out for about three days. And I ended up in uh, they took me from the camp we were in over to the eighth uh, division section where they had hospital, you know. And, uh, Do you know the name of the hospital that you went to? Oh, it was a salarine hospital. It or was, was it Robert's Barracks? It was just one of those big buildings that yeah. they, where they had the quarters for uh, the men's quarters. Could I just check whether you recall whether was it Robert's? Because yeah, one of the Robert's, Robert's Barracks hospital. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's where I was. Yes. And uh, you know, I was just about had it at that mm. stage, and uh, they'd done some tests and. 
come back and uh, Bruce Hunt was the doctor. I didn't know him from a bar of burgers, of course. Yes. And he came in and he said, son, he said, you've got amoebic dysentery. Uh, ah. And he said, uh, that's the worst form of dysentery you can have. And I didn't, you know, at that stage I wasn't caring what happened to me. Uh, I was that near to gone, it didn't matter. He said, I'm going to give you some tablets. Uh, and he said, I don't know if they'll do any good or not, but he said, we're going to try you out. And they are called sulfamylamide, M and B tablets, uh, which we give, uh, they were issued to the army to give to people with venereal disease. And, you know, and I, thought, I sort of stirred a bit. Anyway, he, they started to feed me these tablets, and after about three weeks, I was back on my feet. Uh, and I believe, I don't know, but uh, in that time, of course, that these fellas had moved on. Mm. I was left behind. I mm. think it was about 12 of us in different regions, and they didn't have a mimic dysentery, but I was the only one. And I believe they used those tablets up, uh, you know, until they all went, and then the mimic dysentery is like cholera. I mean, it's just about as deadly as cholera. It's the biggest killer on the line. Yes, mm. yes. So, uh, I, it, it, it's not, this is amoebic dysentery oh. I'm talking about, oh. and uh, it, uh, it's fatal. Oh. But anyway, I was I, I always say, well, the, the fellas that had venereal gonorrhea had saved me because I had their tablets. Oh. But that's uh, what happened, and of course, as a result of that, I was left behind, and we weren't treated very well. We got when we were sent over to and mingled in with the with the others, although they kept kept us few sort of isolated, that we was never sort of parted, and uh, and then. So uh, who was with you? Do you remember the, well, the second, well, uh, third? Well, uh, there must have been some pioneers with you as well, were there? Yeah, there was the, the fellows that I remember well, and they're all passed on now. Was a fellow called Jock Page, who uh, who never he, he took sick there as well. Uh, he was a Oh, he had, uh, what do you call it, uh, dermatitis, covered all over him. Mm. Uh, and uh, uh, who the hell was the other? Oh, what they call Wilkinson. Is it Wilkinson or what? Yeah, Wilkinson, Norm Wilkinson. Oh, and uh, your friend, the jeweler from Hobart? Flint. Flint, Ethel Flint. Yeah. Uh, well, we were then, you know, in Salarang until they opened up the jail. Mm. And then we went into the jail mm. and I went on to, into A block on the second level, cell three. And uh, when I got out of the place, mm. I took the cell off, the number off the top of the door mm -hmm. and it's still off when I went back there. Of course, it's, the jail's gone there, but when I went back several years later, mm to commemorate that in the 50th anniversary of the Singapore as national president. Mm. And they let, allowed me into the jail, took me to my own cell and looked up and here's, it's still, they had it, it written in white paint three. Mm. So, uh, but and I gave that number, my daughter's got it in Melbourne, she got it mounted and that's it. That's, uh, a real souvenir. Do you remember any of the other doctors in Roberts Barracks Hospital other than Bruce Hunt? No, I don't. Any? Do you remember? Did you have any medical orderlies who particularly looked after that no, you remember? No, no. You know, they. Uh, I only. I went back. <coughs> and I didn't. Uh, once I got out of Roberts Marriage mm. Hospital, mm. and then we went to the jail. I mean, I. Did you go to Cellarang uh, before you went to the jail? Did you go to Cellarang so Barracks yeah, before you went to the jail? Yeah, well, we went into the, with those big buildings, and mm. they're all disappeared. I think there's one left. Mm. And we were camped in there, mm. but uh, I haven't got much recollection. I know that I got several things, and uh, when I went to uh, into the jail mm. with this, I had this uh, terrible bloody uh, ear infection, not in uh, abscess in my ear, mm. and they lanced that without anaesthetic. Yeah, who did that? Do you know the doctor who did it's that? A, a Dutchman. Mm. And I, I wouldn't know his yeah. name and, and yeah. I never ever did know his name. No. Uh, 
and Miss Woodruff took her toenail off. Mm. <laughs> uh, so, but I had, you know, lots of dysenteries and malaria, particularly mm. malaria. Do you know how many, did you have malaria before? Like when you're on I Java, had malaria but in Java, but yes. then I got uh, I had 14 bouts of malaria mm. during my POW days. Mm. Mm. Uh, some of them were relapses, mm. and then you get a fresh infection. You know, mm. I don't know how, how many were fresh infections. I mm. don't know, but I know that it makes you bloody sick, whatever it is, mm. Mm. and uh, without any uh, any out any medication. Mm. But. Uh, and I think if you got malaria and dysentery at the same time, you're dead duck. I mean, mm. you couldn't survive it. You get malaria and get over, and then you get a bout of dysentery, and mm. you get, you know, you survive. A lot of them didn't. A lot of them didn't, of course. But you, uh, and how we go on to? You said well. You said that you worked uh, out on the airfield. Can you tell yeah, us well, a little bit that about was, that? That was a big job. Mm. Yeah, that's where we were most of the time. And that was after the F and H force had come back from. Thailand, uh, wasn't it? We started that long before they came oh, back. Yeah. But they came back during its construction, mm. or near the end of its mm. construction. And what condition were they in when they came back? Terrible. Mm. They were Air Force base. Mm. They were shockers, mm. poor buggers. And a lot of them died you know, after they came back. Mm. And I don't know whether they sent some of those on to Japan or not. I don't know. I, uh, they, they put them in huts outside the jail. They didn't come into the jail itself because the jail was full and they yeah. built some of those add up huts out the back. Yes. And that's where they were domiciled. Mm. Mm. Uh, but, you know, I got to know them and they started to, as they get a bit better, would come out on the line and, you know, they were. They were 40th Battalion, a lot of them. Mm. So they, were, they were, had been in a bad way. Mm. They had a pretty rough. Mm. And there's some 26th Battalion blokes too. Mm -hmm. uh, they, were in that, they were Queenslanders. I don't know how many of them they were, but I know a lot of them were pretty good. And pretty, they had a pretty. They were only there for eight months, I think. Air Force. Yes. And yeah. they went up on the line very long, but by hell, they took a pace. Well, the death rate demonstrates that. Mm. Well, it was 42 mm. percent, was it? Yeah. Mm. Uh, they have the a death, death rate of the whole. A lot of the POWs overall, mm. counting the, the 8th Division mm. and that sort of thing, was 36 percent. Mm. Mm. And you take into account those who were killed in action, which I think is about 5 percent, this 8th Division mm. and, and us and the 7th, it was about 41 percent. Mm. of the POWs that were captured by the Japanese never come home. Mm. Mm. Did you ever see Hunt again? No, no I didn't see Hunt. I think yeah. he moved on. I mean, once, he, uh, well, I he... a, once I got over the, out of that and got out of that Roberts Hospital, mm. I didn't go back. No. Uh, and I doubt whether I seen Hunt in the recuperation either. You know, I see some other doctor or something. Mm. I don't, I can't recall really. Mm. Mm. But uh, I can remember him coming in, you know, and talking to me, but I was sort of semi-delirious at that stage. Did he have presence? Like, hmm? did he have presence? You know, like, sometimes people come into a room and instantly you're aware that they're there. Yeah, and, well, he was. He, yeah. I, if I remember, he was a stocky sort of a bloke. Uh, you know, thick-set sort of a man. I'm told he was very powerful. And he was about six foot two, but yeah, uh, that's, yeah, yeah. I, I've never seen the man, of course. No, no. Mm. Uh, but uh, I know he went when he went up on the line, and uh, he must have been with uh, George George uh, Beard, a great old mate of mine from the Twenty Six Battalion. He was. He couldn't speak high mm. enough of Bruce. Mm. Yeah, yeah. He said he's the best doctor that has ever been up on the line. Mm. Yeah. Weary tossed him. Yes. Well. It's, it, there is a saying that every camp had its weary Dunlop. Mm. Anyway, uh, what about uh, when was the first time you knew that the war was over? Well, the first time we knew the war was over, we were out working. Uh, I wasn't on the line, on, on the drain at that time. I was out, uh, what the hell were we doing, buddy foxholes, you know, to bury us, I think, our own. own uh, you know, they, they were preparing that if... We Your own graves. Yeah, mm. our own graves. Mm. 
and they knocked us off about three o'clock in the afternoon, which is very unusual. Mm. We came back in, uh, there were radios in the jail, of course, but we didn't have access to them, and there was always rumours, you know, but some of the stuff that we're told that was true. Mm. Uh, and uh, and the rumour was that the Japanese were going to sign a surrender. Mm. Uh, and uh, and the next day we didn't go out again. And I don't remember was it three or four days. Mm. And we got bombed with these pamphlets, which I still got a copy. Mm. I got a, a, I picked up one. I still got it. <laughs> uh, have you seen those? No. Well, if I remember, I'll bring it over and I'll show you. Thank you. Uh, and uh, if I can find it. Um, and then a few days after that, it was about the 30th of August, you know, the war finished on the 15th, it was about the 30th of August when we seen people coming into the camp. Mm. And they were, uh, I think they were parishes, they dropped them in, you know. Mm. They, they'd, come over with these pamphlets and said, stay where you are, don't eat anything, mm. don't get around, look after yourself. Mm. And that's on the pamphlet. Mm. And, uh, and then they, uh, the, these fellas come in and a few days later, I think Mount Batten came in on the ship and uh, a lot of the blokes then took off and went in, they were going on board ship. We were, we were told, and I can't remember who by that, we eighth of uh, seventh division blokes. There's forty odd of us in mm. Singapore. Mm. It would be it would be given first priority to go come home mm. on the first ship or the first aircraft or mm. whatever, not to go out of the jail because mm. you know the aircraft could be landing. You could be on it and, mm. without any notice, you know. And uh, so I went and I thought, well, I'm not moving, going into Singapore mm. and have to get on the, some of these ships and have a great meal mm. and miss the plane. Because mm. they said, do you want, you, what do you want to do, go home by plane or mm. boat? I said, plane the quickest bloody way. Mm. And that was the worst thing we ever said. Mm. Because we got, it was a terrible trip home. Mm. And frightening. Where did you fly into? Well, we flew out of Singapore. There was, when we got to the aerodrome on the morning we were leaving, there was a big plane in my view. You know, it was mm. a DC-3. Mm -hmm. And uh, and there was a uh, two Mitchell bombers, mm -hmm. and I think there was forty odd of us, and they said, right, I will get you know, please yourself, which one to get on, and they was climbing up through the bottom of these bloody Mitchell bombers here. I thought, the hell with that, I'm not having one of that. So I went over this big plane, and uh, it was a DC three, and it was a freighter with a Dutch crew. Uh, a Dutch pilot, co-pilot, and an engineer, and, that's, and it was been carting, uh, taking uh, stores and supplies into New Guinea and up that end of the woods. And they'd come down to Singapore to take us home and have new engines put in the thing. But we find it out afterwards. And how it was hot, we got on board, and they tried to get the engine started. They started up, and something went wrong. They said, "No, you all got to get out." And before we got on, they gave us a packet of ten cigarettes each. And, uh, oh, you know, this is marvellous. And this Dutch bloke engineer got up and they took the top off the, one of the motors, I suppose, and he's messing around with it and said, oh, we'll get back on again. So we get back in again, started up, we said, no, 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 out again. And this fellow, they could, uh, could barely speak English. And, he, and I can't remember to this day, but there's a cellophane off the cigarette paper or the silver paper in the packet, and he got a bit of this and put it in the bloody motor, and away we went. And we flew from there, and these two Mitchell bombers, they took off, they're gone, and mm. we we're two hours there messing around before we got off. Mm. And uh, we went to uh, Balik Papen, mm -hmm. and there was a big army uh, AGH there. Mm. And and these Japs come down with these little jeeps, not Japs, uh, Americans, mm. one per jeep. And, you know, we were... Mm. Uh, I suppose you'd never seen a jeep before no, in your life. No, I never mm. seen these little things that we mm. got in. And mm. Another way. So there was 23 of us, I think, on mm. this thing. And uh, so we, they took us up to this hospital. 
And we was up, we only had on what we stood, what we had mm. as POWs. So mm. I had a pair of shorts, mm. but some of them had G-strings, mm. you know. So, <laughs> dirty bloody palm olive oil stains on it and God knows what. And uh, anyway, they took us into this big army hospital camp. Nurses, the Australian nurses there. And they had showers, hot showers. Mm. Well, I hadn't had a hot shower, I don't think, since I left Australia. Mm. Because, you know, we didn't get bloody hot showers over there in, mm. in, in the Middle East either. And they gave us a big bloody cake of soap each. Have a, you know, wash yourself mm. thoroughly. Mm. These nurses are saying, give yourself a good mm. wash. Mm. And then we'd come out and dried ourselves in these beautiful towels and then couldn't stop smelling our bloody selves. You know, they smelled so bloody nice. And, uh, and then they took us and they fitted us out with gear, you know, mm. underclothes, the mm. whole lot. We got a new kit. Mm. And I can remember going into our, they had tents and the big, uh, around this hospital, and big fence. And all these blokes, army blokes, up against the fence, said, yeah, you know, so and so, you know, so and so. Uh, and this little young bloke said to me, do you know, did you know Dave Hards? And I said, yeah, I knew Dave. Uh, but I said, I don't know what happened to him. But I said, I've got a fellow here that's got a record of who all the, who died. Mm. So I said, Max Alina, do you know what happened to Dave Hart? And Max gets this, yes, he died at such and such a place on such and such a day. Mm. And uh, I told this poor bugger, I didn't know he was his brother, and he mm. broke down, mm. of course, naturally. Mm. And anyway, uh, I had my old hat. It was tattered and mm. holes all in it. You know, and they gave us a new hat and I just threw it down on the ground and this you know, on the floor. And these blokes said, do you want that hat? And I mm. said, no, I don't want the bloody hat, it's mm. probably full of bugs and lice. He said, can I have it? And I said, yeah, I tossed it over the fence. Mm. Mm. But anyway, to finish off the hard story, I'm walking down Rundle's, uh, King William Street near the GP, not the GPO, the town hall, mm. about a month after I come home and along comes Dave Hard. And I was just cross. I said, I thought you died. He said, you wasn't the bugger that told my brother <laughs> in Ballet Papin that I was dead, were you? And I said, well, Max Alexander said, you, he had to down in his book. Yeah. It's dead. Yeah. Well, he said, I'm still alive. <laughs> well, he only lived a couple of years after poor old day. Yeah. Yeah. And he came from Piri. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, what we're talking well, just, about. just your, your route back to Australia. Well, the route mm. back to Australia. Then we left there, mm. we left Ballyppapin, mm. uh, we got to Ballyppapin. The next morning we took off, mm. these Mitchell bombers were flying direct to Darwin, mm. but this plane we were in what didn't, couldn't go that far. Mm. So we, we had to go to Moratai mm. and then down to, uh, Cairns. Down to uh, uh, Moroki in New Guinea, yes. and then home. Mm. And we are due to stop at Moroki the mm. next night, so mm. I never got this. We've got to Moratai, mm. and, and the airport looked like it was on the beach, you know. And we, we flew around a couple of three times, and I said, We've seen this other plane land, and so we came in behind it and eventually landed and pulled up alongside it. And they came out with a big box of petrol case of bloody sandwiches for us and this crew and this other plane Gracie Fields was with it oh. and they they were a concert party either going up north or coming back from north up somewhere yeah in uh, been up in uh, uh, what do you call Borneo or something over the bloody Rangoon up that way yeah uh, oh they've been Burma, Burma. Burma. yes Burma. yeah they've yeah. been up there giving concerts yeah there. yeah and uh, well, here she was, well, she's the ugliest bloody woman I've ever seen. Yeah. And uh, she had a pair of old, and it was unusual in those days to see women in long pants. Yeah. And then, anyway, she, she came across to us and, oh, you know, when she found who we were and all these other constant blokes, so artists or some description, mm. I suppose. And anyway, uh, someone said, oh, go on, you better sing us a song. You know, and she sang, wish me luck as you wave me goodbye. Oh, naturally. <laughs> and we got back on the plane. Yeah. Never got nothing as yeah. long as I lived. Oh, that was an experience. Yeah, very interesting. Well, yeah. So then we took off from there, and uh, during the afternoon, uh, the uh, uh, second dicky, whatever, was come back to us and said, mm. how are you folks travelling? We said, we're all right. Mm. Keep her going, you know, and they said, well, 
if we will go to Milwaukee and refuel and fly on down to Darwin and instead of get to uh, Brisbane and instead of getting there um, and staying the night, this night, it was a Thursday, it was a Friday, and we'd get down there Saturday night, we'd get down there Saturday morning. And we'll, we'll stop it. Instead of stopping at Milwaukee, we'll just f refuel and go on. I said, oh, that's okay, keep it going. Well, in the middle of it, it got dark, and then I don't know what time it was, no, it was early in the night. And this bloody, you could see the lightning, and the plane go, ooh, woof, and we had no seat belts, nothing. We were sitting on a bench there, mm. it was a bench seat, mm. just aluminium and only mm. about that high. Mm. Bloody hell, we buffeted around, you know, hanging on to one another. Mm. And anyway, he came back and he said, look, we're trying to get on the radar. Because we didn't know what bloody radar mm. was. Mm. Right. We ended up going to a place called Biak, mm. on the north of the island. Yeah. Mm. There's an air force place mm. there. Mm. And uh, so we touched down and he said, we only had about an hour's left of fuel left mm. in the bloody thing. Mm. And uh, so luckily you know, we, uh, we stayed there the night, refueled and got up the next morning and took off. And you could, we flew between these bloody mountains and it's the Owen Stanley Ranges. Mm. And the Christ, you, if you went down in the daytime, you'd have no hope. Mm. You know, uh, big rivers and uh, mm. We flew on, we uh, went down to, uh, what do you call it, muddy place, uh, Townsville. Mm. We re refueled there mm. and had lunch. Mm. And then we took off and down to, uh, to Brisbane. Uh, what was the name of the airport we stopped at Brisbane? Uh, Archerfield. Mm. And, uh, and it was raining and wet. And they said, now hang on because it is a bit slippery. Mm. And then you know, and we landed that incident, got out of the plane, and I said, this is, I'm on bloody Australian soil and I'm stopping out and there's nobody where I'm going back in the plane anyway. I'll mm. walk home. Mm. And anyway, they took us by troop train then. Mm down to uh, Melbourne, oh, yeah. put us into Heidelberg. Oh. Uh, that's when uh, your buddy mate, the, the uh, jeweller, what's his name? Flint. <laughs> Flint. Oh. oh, Ethel Flint. And then we got, we got off the, we pulled into Sydney in this, he's one of Tasmanian bike. Uh, he got off the plane, there's a woman there that must have known him, I don't know what he'd sent with his world. She got all of him, I thought she was going to break him in half. But uh, we only stayed there for a bit. We got back on the train. We had a sleepers on the mm. had, you, know, you sleep double decker beds, mm. Mm. and uh, it was comfortable. And we got down to Melbourne and went into Heidelberg Hospital, and came home the next night on the Melbourne Express to mm. Adelaide. Excellent. Now I just want to, one more question to wrap your side of the story. And you told me a little bit about Sid Crans with you, if you can do it briefly, with your. Uh, treatment post-war. Oh well, you know, about a year after the war, there was so much hullabaloo about the POWs being kicked out of the army mm. and not given sufficient attention as far as pensions were concerned. Mm. And they recalled all POWs, not just me. Mm. The the whole lot, that's wherever they were, you know, mm. all states. Mm. And uh, and they sent you, gave you a medical, and you went before the the board. Mm. And I don't know whether the when the doctors examined me and said, well, you know, you better go get a pension. Mm. And I don't recall filling in an application for mm. I may have done, I don't mm. know. Mm. But uh, Sid Crans was the head of the of the board mm. that met. There's about four or five of them sitting up along this table and mm. came, got me in to sat me down. Mm. And of course, I they wanted to send us when we first came home down to Victor Harbour to a rest camp down there mm, and uh, mm. we, you know, we got get out of the bloody army in order to rest right. camp. And, uh, and so I was fearful that if you start applying for pensions, yeah, that's mm. what they're going to happen to you. Mm. Anyway, Sid Cran said to me, well, you know, get on Mr. Smith when I got in there and sat in the, on the opposite side. And I said, hello. He said, uh, how are you going? And, you know, asked a few questions. And he said, uh, you wouldn't be as good as what you were when you joined the army, would you? And I said, oh, I don't know about that. I said, I've just knocked out a daughter, my daughter, first daughter, <laughs> who'd been born about a week before. And they said, oh, you know, and they, you know, they all giggled and laughed. And a few more questions. Eventually he said, now, uh, we're going to discharge you. We're going to give you a 40% 
disability pension. Yes, yeah. So I said, well, thank you very much, and I didn't know how much that was worth, but I had it for many, many years. I never ever took it off. No. And later years, I increased it, of course. Yes, mm -hmm. excellent. Well, thank you, Bill. And now I'll just switch over, and John, uh, you're, well, you're already in the frame, and uh, you, uh, we were at Singapore, and you were, cho you went through to Thailand as a part of Dunlop Force. Yes. And the the section of the train journey is probably well known to most people. But can you start from when you got off the train at Ban Pong? Do you do you, do you have any firm recollection of that? Uh, no, actually, what happened to us? We were must have been bloody lucky because. We were taken up in trucks up to um, to Canbury. Mm. Or uh, how we must have taken the trucks there, and then we went across on the old bridge, and then we were in, got into more trucks and we were taken mm. up to that. That first camp that Tasso? We... Tasso, was it? No, no. Conyu uh, River Camp? Um, we. What was that first camp we went to? We, we, it was just a little bit of a clearing and we had to build our own yes. camp there. Yeah. And then we went from there up to Hintock. Hintock uh, Road Camp. Yes. Mm. What was it called? Uh, the name of it now. There was a, it was a pommy camp. Yeah, I, I wondered if it was. I'll just stop this for a second. Uh, and we, you, you, we've now the, identified the name of that first camp that you set up. Camburi, and, and from Camburi we, we went to this camp Conyu, mm, mm. uh, and it adjoined a an English camp. Mm. There, they were in there, hell of a mess. Mm. This. Uh, it was right on the river, and uh, it wasn't too good at all for them. Anyhow, we had to carve our own camp out. We had to um, get all these bamboos out. You know, we used to have ropes. We used to pull them out of, and build a camp there. And uh, we'd sort of no sooner got it built and the huts done. Uh, and then we were moved up to uh, to Hintock Road. Mm. Can you can you describe the layout of Hintock Road Camp for us? Uh, some of the features. Um, yes, there was um, when we got there. There was a clearing. And there were a couple of huts, but the, the rest of the boys had to camp. I happened to be in a hut and uh, they were intense mm. uh, and then we to go out to the line we used to have to cross a creek mm. and go up this in escarpment and, and now then, now you talked about just go up there as escarpment was it steep oh uh, well how did you climb it well it was it was mm. a, a, a difficult mm. climb it wasn't all that long but mm. it was high but mm. it was difficult mm. uh, to get up there, and um, and then the other part of it was, as I explained, that uh, quite a big hill at the back where all the monkeys lived mm. up there, um, and uh, we had two routes to go out to the line, either we would walk out and go down to the line, or the shortest way was to get up, climb up this scarf mm. thing, as I call it there. Yeah. Did you have ladders or anything like that? No, no, no. We mm. just had to make our mm. way up. Yes. And that was our first trip to the line. Mm. We went up mm. over there. And what work were you? Did they force you to do down there? Well, it was all construction, mm. and uh, and I was on the hammer and tap on the. Um, the cutting mm -hmm. there, the work on there, and then uh, uh, f for some reason or other, I was 
taken down to a, to another camp. Um, Des Jackson and I, we went down there having to build a road down near <coughs> the original camp before we went up mm. to it. And uh, when I came back from there, I was went down to uh, Hintock River Camp. To, Hintock River Camp. Yes, mm. and then from there I went down to Tarso. Mm -hmm. Now that was a huge camp, Tarso, yes. wasn't it? Yes, it was. And and was there there were lots of Brits there? Yeah, oh yes. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, you know, it was a huge camp. Mm. Uh, one part of it was more a hospital camp, mm. Mm. and the other part was we were building roads mm. and doing all sorts of things. Now, there. at the hospital camp, do you remember the names of any of the doctors there? No, I don't, because mm. I didn't have any no. any occasion. Well, do you remember there was a repat doctor here in Adelaide called Bill Harvey? After the war? No. Oh, well, he was the British doctor in charge of that camp. He migrated to Australia afterwards. Was he really? Yeah. And was there a dentist there by the name of Finnamore, by any chance? No. Look, I, as I said, I, I, fortunately I had no occasion yes. to have any connection yeah. with that hospital. So. Okay. Now, you told me earlier when we were just talking without recording that from Tarsau you went down to Chongkai. Have I got the that Chong right? Chiang Kai, yeah. yes. How did you get there? Uh, by boat. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we went down there by boat. Mm. And then uh, worked on construction down there. Uh, and then, whilst we were there, um, Weary turned up. Yes. Yes. And uh, he organised that it was a pretty slack sort of a place, Chiang Kai, and he straightened the whole place up in the hospital and everything as far as he had a bit of say, I think, with some of the merchants and he used to get things in that we were unaware of. and. Uh, and they had a radio bogey night, used to operate the radio there in the cookhouse at Chiang Kai. Now with that, that comment you made about Weary, do you know that personally or is that based on reading his yes, diary? No, because I happened to be working out on there when when I saw him walk into the camp. Yeah, no, I know he was there. Yeah. But you, you, you said that he sorted the camp out. Yes. Now what I want to know is do you know that from your knowledge of being there, or do you only know it because of comments that were in his diary? Well, no, that, that you could observe. Yes. That the, the place was, you know, you know, there was everything was was cleaned up and there'd be washing and so forth mm. hanging out there, as far as the hospital mm. was concerned. Mm -hmm. And really the place was tidy up mm. mm. that way. Mm. And what, what was your impression of Chongkai? Oh, that was a that was a great camp, really. Yes, yeah. uh, that was again was a hospital, uh, sort of a hospital camp. It or, certainly was, yeah. Or resting camp, yeah, or yeah. rest. So you were were you ill? Was that why you were sent to Chongkai? No, uh, we were sent to do some road work mm. down there. Mm. And did you did you? Uh, Hear of Jacob Markovich, the doctor in that camp? Or? Well, I, I remember yeah. the name where I heard yes. it from, I don't know. Yes, yeah. But yeah. Major Moon was there. Yes, yeah. Now, had you, did you know Moon before? Only, before that? only from um, uh, Hintop. Yes. You yeah. know, I, I saw him uh, as he was one of the best. And did you... Did you under, did you have any appreciation of Arthur Moon's status in that camp? Uh, only that he um, not uh, not only that he seemed to be the expert in in um, in uh, uh, 
you know, <laughs> chopping the leg off and yes. so forth. Yes. You know, yeah. uh, that he did quite a lot of that. Yes. Yeah. Now, from Chongkai, where did where did you go to? Then we went down to a place called I think it was Tamuan. Yes. Yeah. Where we all assembled before we went to Japan. Yeah. Now, do you remember Moon or Colette being in Tamuan? No, mm. no, I don't. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't know whether they were. Or not. Do you remember Ken Woods? Do you, 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 you remember? Do you remember Ken? Yes. Do you would you remember him being in Tamuang? No. No. And anyway, you you were, you were chosen to go on the Japan party from yes, Tamuang. I was supposed to be fit. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Do you remember the procedure they went through to select you? No. Well, we were. I think we were. Some issued with some little flimsy blue shorts that oh. we were getting, and the top. Oh. It was all I can remember is that we were all lined up oh. and given the gear, oh. and uh, and the next thing you know, away we went. Oh. We went down my train to where to Singapore, didn't you? To Singapore. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And just write down what I need to uh, thank you. bring with me to Perth. Thank you. And then we went to this camp, it was called Happy Road or something or other, or, or Happy World. Ah, oh, the New so World, the New, New world, world Camp, yes, like yeah. Uh, and then we got on this, this terrible conveyance for this ship. Yes. It was called the Bioki Maru. Well, that was the name they had inherited. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And you've no doubt yeah. seen drawings of it. And yes. And so yeah, I'll tell you, uh, Banjo Binstead gave me a drawing oh, yes. of it. Oh, yeah. yes, that's right. The late Banjo. So, mm. you know, that was the detail mm. on that. And that took us 72 days to get mm. from Singapore mm. to Japan. It must have been horrid. To Japan. Yeah. Well, you, there are some. Uh, there were at least two Australian doctors on that ship. One was David Hinder, and the other one was a fellow named Dick Parker. And there was a ex, a, a regular army major by the name of Reg Newton who was on it. Who yes, was yes. Roaring Reg Roaring Newton. Roaring Reggie, yeah. they yeah. called yeah. him. Yeah. He was the CO yeah. wasn't he? No, uh, not the... It wasn't the CO, but he was uh, the second 20th, I think, he was yes. with. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, of course, you know, the voids there, as a banjo described it, it was... And then we... Um, I always tell the story of uh, the latrine was a crate slung over the side of yeah. the ship. And I happened to be in there one day and uh, I was... There was no one else waiting to get in so I sort of saved a little time and the sea was as smooth as could be and I was watching a couple of seagulls swimming on there and then there was this big ship, it was quite big, right behind us and the next thing, she was torpedoed and uh, you know, it was a terrific explosion mm -hmm. and uh, the... Uh, she, God must have got it right in the middle because he just went up like that and mm. went down. But I, that expression I experienced that, you, you know, <laughs> that they got such a fright they shit themselves. Yeah, well, yeah. I'd already been and I immediately <laughs> went again. So <laughs> where I got, got it from to be able to do it, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Um, but then I was quite eventual the blokes from the Perth said that we would have passed they would have had their eye on and then mm. the last guy passed they weren't going to waste the torpedo on us. Yeah, yeah. But they got this bigger one behind. Yeah. Because your your old vessel was a burnt out hulk yes. that was welded together with you know, yes. these girders across the top yes. holding it together. Yeah. Somebody said it was built in 1926 yeah. in Canada. Yeah.
Now, yeah. which port did you land in in, in uh, Japan? In Meiji. Meiji, yeah. And yeah. then how did you get to your your future camp? In, in a, a guy in, in a in a barge. Yes. Yeah. And talk about about ingenuity or you know and. How can I express it? Of, of characters, we, we, as we were approaching this, so one of the blokes put his head up over the thing, and, the, and he said, "Shit, it's a mine!" And one bloke said, "My mother told me to keep away from deep holes." <laughs> 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 Just the humour yes. of yeah. it all. Yeah, yeah. And so we went then. We, Went into this camp and yeah. we were there until. How many Aussies were in it? Oh, there was, there was only uh, our group. Um, How many? hundred odd. Yeah. Were they all second, third machine guns, or um, were they? No, there were some mixtures. Yes. With it, because when we were off the boat and they said, "Well, from here, yes. you know, you go there." Yeah. And, but there were English in the camp had been there for years. Yeah. Mm. And uh, they, they were sent straight there from Singapore when mm. they capitulated. Mm. Mm. And what work were you doing there? Well, mining. Mm. It was under the sea, mm. this mine mm. there. And I guess that was something you wanted to keep well clear of when you became a citizen, <laughs> a civilian. Yes, mm. indeed. Mm. Uh, it was quite an experience. Yeah. Now, what was your health like while you were in that camp? Well, uh, I remember I, I got pleurisy and a, a few of those things that... Uh, I had you know, you know, stomach trouble mm. and so forth, mm. and lack of horsepower, of course. Mm. Mm. Um, so, really, I, I've been lucky to a certain extent mm. Mm. about those things. But that's why we're back. So that's why we got back. We're lucky. Mm. Yes. Mm. Mm. And. Uh, but the English fellows there, they had been miners, they were from the Rhondda Valley. Yes. So they must have said, you know, when we were first caught, we said, what was your occupation? And, and there were thousands of boundary riders. Mm. <laughs> but these fellows must have said they were miners. Yes, yes. And they were sent straight up yes. there. Yeah, yeah. So they helped us yeah. a bit. You know. And I think you said your doctors in that camp were the American and yeah, the Dutch. Yes, yeah. And um, do you do you recall? Oh, what what sort of clothing did you have? What sort of bedding did you have? Well, it it, it was marvelous. It was the best bedding we've ever had in the army. Mm. It it was. These were barracks. Mm. Uh, and we even had eider downs and mm. things to put in, and the whole lot was, even though there was full of lice and fleas and, mm. and cockroaches and uh, mm. things, but as far as being undercover, mm. it, it was the best that, mm. that we'd had in the army, really. Did you ever wonder whether you were going to get home or whether there was going to be a future? Well, we. We didn't, well, the, the general consensus, well, we wouldn't have lasted another winter. The mm. winter we had was the coldest winter they'd had in 72 years. Mm. 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 And uh, our mining that was, was a he hessian pair of shorts and a, and a sort of a blouse. Mm. Mm. And how high were the, uh, were they called stoops or something that you work in, aren't they? How high well, were they? I mean, you're well, a tall man. Yes, oh, they were, well, what a heading uh, they're called. Mm. Sometimes you'd be working out in the open, mm. uh, sort of, say, like ballrooming, and others you'd be in the conveyor where mm. they'd fall the, 
the uh, you'd work on a face like that. Uh -huh. uh, but then the safeguard, well, they'd, as you went forward, they'd fall uh, behind you onto a conveyor behind, belt, did yes, it? Yeah. Behind there. But you'd go in on a, so, uh, well, could be as wide as that window uh -huh. and that high. You'd follow the seam, uh -huh. the coal seam. Well, you're working with Japs? With a fellow we, jet. we had one one chap mm. who used to come and do the timbering, mm. and uh, uh, and then one with a pneumatic drill. Mm. Uh, they had the, they had a short drill. Mm. Uh, he would come in and, and work on mm. that, and so as to get the coal out. Now, um, do you, do you remember when the war? When you first knew that the war was over? Uh, yeah, well, we knew it was coming because uh, I learned a bit of Jap. I was interested in languages and uh, so I, I had a fellow that used to cut the timber for us and he told me one day that in Japanese that the German war had finished. Mm -hmm. And he said, what's going to happen now? And I said, all, all the aeroplanes, all the ships, all the men will come out here uh -huh. and fight. <laughs> and that really dented him a bit. Uh -huh. And then uh, when the atomic bomb went off, we were on night shift and we came out uh -huh. of the mine about in, in the morning and uh -huh. we were having our breakfast, our cup of rice, and we heard this terrific explosion. Mm. What was happening, that the Yanks had come over and bombed one city at a time, mm. and there were two cities just over from us, which would have been about pre size of pre-war Adelaide, mm. I think. And so somebody said, gee, they're giving honour to or you be a, a, a going mm. today. And then, uh, this couple of days later, this same fellow pulled me aside and, and said there was an electric bomb went off. Uh -huh. And uh, would, it, would it be possible uh, for an electric bomb? And I said, oh, I don't know. And then he said, well, is it possible for one big bomb to have a lot of little bombs inside it? Uh -huh. And it was what he was talking about in Sandries and oh. I, I said yes and so forth. And then one day we saw a fighter came over our camp. Oh. And so from then on oh. this is what happened. It gathered in momentum. Oh. And then the day that the old emperor thought that the all the guards and who went into the then into the commandant's office and, oh. there. and we didn't know what was going on but um, when we got up to have some lunch we were on night shift and they told us that all this had happened and oh. they didn't know what was happening and uh, so then we were due to go down the mine, mine that night and we were all lined up to go down and the afternoon shift came running down, the, <laughs> running down the, the, in the, from the camp, from the gates, saying, she's over, she's over, she's over. And we were saying, what's over? And they said, well, and then the children in the street started singing out, sense of worry, which is war is finished. Oh. And so that's how we, we ended up and then we, we did things smoked outside which we shouldn't, would not have been able to do and uh, then told the guys to get nicked with some weapons <laughs> and then my god the next morning the air raid, an air raid siren went and we thought oh we're going to be for it now but it was the all clear mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. went so. mm -hmm. and then like Bill uh, eventually the Yanks
eggs found us and they dropped this leaf and to say, uh, you know, stay where you are and hasten your own rescue by and others staying where you were mm. and do not overeat mm. because they started dropping stuff True. to us. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And then uh, eventually after some time, I think it might have been about a month, they came and picked us up in trucks and took us to a station mm. and we <laughs> They took us all around the Rosh and up because we didn't know some people had been over there and mm. didn't know anything about this contamination. Mm. And took us down to a seaside place, a big hotel, and uh, they, you know, deloused us mm. and gave us clothes mm. and fed us, and we. Uh, <coughs> got on this hospital ship and then... Do you know the name of it? Yes, it was called the Constellation. Oh. Constellation. Oh. And that to Manila. Oh. And then uh, from Manila, um, we, there was an Aussie. We got letters there and uh, they fitted us out in some Aussie clothes because we just had a singlet and a pair mm. of uh, jeans that mm. the Yanks gave us. Mm. Incidentally, I was, the day we got on the ship and I was walking around the deck and there were a bunch of Yanks there talking and sitting up on the railing and as I went past, one bloke turned around to me, he said, say Ozzy, what do you think of him? And they said, I said, who? And they said, Frankie Sinatra. Oh. And I said, who oh, the bloody hell Frank Sinatra? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they said, chuck the bastard overboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyhow, and so we went, got down to, uh, to Manila, to this Clark Field, and um, uh, then we were fitted out with clothing. Mm. Now, I'm sorry, we didn't, we, went to Okinawa uh -huh. and into this uh, American camp there and then we got on a, on a transport, American troop transport down to Manila uh -huh. and that's where our people, the Aussies were and we got fitted out there and then we got on an aircraft carrier uh -huh. uh, and went to Sydney. Which one was that? Not the formidable. It's the speaker. Oh, the speaker? Yes. Ah. Mm. The funny thing, you know, I, when I was in the UK, I went into Westminster Abbey and there was a church right next door. And I went in and had a look there and lo and behold, there was a plaque yeah. on the wall yeah. with a speaker. And of course it was a, a British ship. Yes. Mm. Mm. You should have a I want to get it. We went down to uh, by the train, a similar oh. train as Bill, or yeah. hospital train, yeah. to Melbourne, mm. and then we camped there one one night. And Blake said they could hear lions roaring. We oh. said, "Oh, no. and they we were in a camp near a zoo, yes. evidently. Yeah. Uh, and then we caught a, a boat to go back to uh, Tasmania. the Tasmania. Yeah. Now you had a a, a similar experience with Sid Crange yourself, did you? I don't know no. whether it was he or not. Yeah, you think thought he might know. have been him. I yeah. didn't know. No, well, I, if it's only uh, it might be, I, I better not go down that path. <laughs> well, I'll just wait now for Bill to come back so that I can... Now, well, gentlemen, Will. John and Bill, I, I'd like to say thank you for you giving the, your time. I know it's an intrusion into your day. Uh, but I've recorded this. It's a little bit of your personal history. It's a little bit of POW history. And I hope when you get your own copy, it will be an, an, a useful addition to your family history. Well, thank you very thank much. You. We're very, very happy very to do so. Life. And we've learnt something yeah, ourselves. That's right. We did not. Look forward to seeing you in Perth. <laughs>